Hello, welcome back to the channel. And as I continue to document my experience uh, with solar panels and my solar journey, I thought since we're now in July, I'll look back at the first six months of 2023 and look at how my solar panels have performed over the first half of this year. And then use those figures because we've just passed the solstice, so days are now getting shorter, so pretty much halfway through the year. Um, therefore, we can probably just double these figures and that should give our my yearly output for solar generation, money savings and all that type of stuff. And then I can compare that to my predictions I made in the beginning of January, which were basically um, extrapolating from um, the four months that I had my solar panels for in the um, 2022 and to see how the payback period is looking. Of course, that's only if the payback, payback period actually matters to you. But it should be an interesting um, sort of discussion and thing just to look at anyway, especially since I'm a scientist. So I like looking at numbers, I like analyzing, I like making predictions. So just a bit of uh, background. On my roof, I have 12 385 watt Q-cell uh, solar panels. They are south facing. Um, we're about two, uh, less than 10 degrees off 10 um, south facing here in Swansea. On top of a hill, no shading, although there is a small chimney pot uh, which does um, put a bit of shade in very early in the morning across three of those panels and I have got optimizers on those panels to take that into account. Um, come in, um, those panels are linked in two strings of six. They come into a five kilowatt hour hybrid solace, uh, sorry, five kilowatt solid hybrid inverter and that then feeds the house and also gets stored in a five kilowatt hour pure drive battery. Um, as far as trying to calculate money um, to get my value um, when I talk about money in this uh, video where this is coming from is I have a separate SEG export tariff which is with So Energy which pays 5p per kilowatt hour. Yes I know that's rubbish but um, there is reasons why I haven't been able to go with anybody else, but um, that's for another video. And my electricity is uh, import is supplied by British Gas. I'm on a dual fuel with them, um, which I fixed back in 2021, around August time 2021, uh, for two and a half years. And um, the rate I'm paying with those is just over 19p per kilowatt hour and a daily standing charge of about 23p per kilowatt hour. I'm not going to include standing charge in any of the analysis I do today. So with all that, let's get straight into the numbers and my first graph. So this graph here just shows my house uses. So this is the number of kilowatt hours my house uses every month. So you can see I've split it down into the months. Um, and as you can see, it's actually fairly level it's always around that 200 uh, kilowatt hour mark um, the blue on this is electricity that i've generated myself then used so either straight off the roof or being stored in the battery then used um, i don't import and charge the battery that way um, and the red is imported electricity so you can see in january i was able to use 144 kilowatt hours of my own or just over 141, sorry, 141 kilowatt hours of my own electricity, but I also then had to import nearly 75 kilowatt hours from the grid. So you can see how this graph makes up. Um, so my total energy used in the house uh, in 2023 up until the end of June is 1,179.8 kilowatt hours. So I say it pretty much works out of two, on averaging out as exactly on 200 kilowatt hours per month. Uh, we should say that our heating is done by gas. There's two of us living in a house, it's a three bedroom house. So we have quite low electricity issues. Even though I have an electric car, um, I have on street parking and I still haven't been able to convince the, um, the Swansea Council to allow somebody like Kerbo or Charge Arm to absorb the system that will allow me to home charge. Um, again, there's other videos I've made based on that. Okay, so that's the... Um, my home usage. So now let's compare that to the actual graph of the amount of electricity I generate each um, month, which is this graph. So I haven't put the numbers on this, but just to give you an idea, in um, January we um, produced around 213 kilowatt hours, February was 272, March 292, April 512, May 
750 and June uh, 720. Those were rounded up and down a little bit as we went. So that uh, is a total generation for this year so far of 2,762 kilowatt hours. And again, I'm taking these numbers from the Solis Cloud app, which uh, monitors my solar uh, generation. So if we were to double that number, it means that we pro we're looking about 5,500 um, kilowatt hours being generated in the year as a whole. That's actually a thousand, uh, a thousand more than the predicted from my supplier. The supplier of this solar system was Glow Green Energy. And I have got videos documenting what my experience was with them. And they predicted that my solar generation in Swansea for, um, would between, be between 4,000 and 4,500. So we've exceeded that if we double this value. Um, of course, the, it tends to be that November and December are slightly worse than January and February. So that number may be a little bit um, overemphasised. But up for those first six months, we did produce um, over 2,700 kilowatt hours. And of that, if I added it together from that previous glass, all the blue columns, um, my total self-use, or once I've in, used myself, was 1,041 kilowatt hours, which means that I exported back to the grid 1,721 kilowatt hours in the first six months of 2023. Um, and it means, meant that I've had to import 156 um, kilowatt hours from British Gas. So if I convert that into money, and I'll just put the um, a quick table on the screen to show this, this means that from that 1,720 I exported, that has given me a seg payment of just under £90, £89 and £81. It meant that um, money that I would have paid to British Gas from using my own electricity at that 19p per kilowatt hour was uh, £204 exactly. I should point out that because of the price cap gap, um, if you're on the highest, higher prices or what likely to be the highest prices next year when we have to move on to a new energy supplier, which would be about 30p, you can add an extra half on top of that. So my pay, when I come to talk about payback, it's going to be quite a long time just and that's just because we fixed our electricity price back when electricity was reasonably cheap and the amount of imported so that 156 that are imported that has cost us a total of 30 pounds and 50 pence so my electricity has cost me just 30 pounds and 50 pence excluding the standing charge for six months of electricity since having the solar panels um, on the Solis app, it does tell you sort of the number of C, uh, amount of CO2 that you've saved and how that um, equates to trees planted. I'm making this a week into July, so these numbers are a little bit over, but not too much. So I'm just going to run them. So since having my solar panels in last August, I've saved um, 4.11 tonnes of CO2. And that's equivalent to pointing, of planting 2.28 uh, trees. And I say those are a bit distorted because we're including some figures from 2022 in there as well. So my total amount that my solar panels have saved and made for me, if I add those together, comes to £293.81. So if I double that, that comes up to about £580. Again, I'm not expecting that to be that accurate. Um, in my previous video, I think I forecast that I'd probably say between £450 and £500 a year. I'd like probably to revise that to probably about the 550 mark but, um, in a year. Um, we'll have a full look at that in September when I've had my solar panels for a full year and I can actually get a real life figure from that. I think it's be about the, four, uh, the 550 mark. Of course, if it is 580, that'll be really good. Um, this um, can be, um, is basically offsetting the cost of my panels. So my panels cost me £8,500, roughly, which means that that sort of £550 payback, uh, you're talking 
15, 14 years of payback. As I say, as we go into higher energy prices, that's going to uh, come down significantly. Um, I should also say that we are looking to use more of our electricity by eventually switching from our gas supply to a pure electric supply. So we have electricity for our heating and our hot water and all of our cooking. We have a gas hob but electric ovens. So again, um, hopefully that um, over time we'll be able to move our lifestyle to a more electric life, uh, just have an electricity supply in our house. And that will, again, bring down the costs um, or the payback period, if that's the type of thing you're interested in. As I say, the system on the roof um, has probably added value to the house. Now, I know a couple of years ago, people were saying solar panels are ugly, but I think now, since the energy crisis, people are starting to think that the aesthetics um, are less important than actually having um, control over how much you pay. Um, just to complete what my analysis on that was, that means my uh, energy import for um, a year based on that six month figures would be about uh, 61 pounds. Um, I think that's a bit low, it'd probably be about more like 75, but again, we'll compare to August. Um, money saved each year, so money I'm not paying to British Cash will be about 208 pounds. I think that is actually quite accurate. Seg payments, um, about uh, 180 pounds for a year based on that 90 pounds um, for that six months. Uh, that's £40 more than what I was actually expecting. I was expecting about a set payment back at um, £150 at that 5p rate. As I say next year, hopefully I'll be able to move on to something like Octopus, taking um, advantage of the um, tariffs which are cheaper in the night to charge a battery on days when it's cloudy. Um, and also they've got a better export tariff as well. So we'll see how things go there. Anyway, so I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please put any questions or comments down the um, comment box below. Um, I like reading them. It's interesting to find out how other people, one, what other people's experience is and what their generation is. If you have any questions about this sort of stuff, um, please ask them. I'll try my best to answer them or at least push, uh, point you in the direction where um, you will get an answer. Anyway, um, if you've liked this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any my videos and I'll see you again in another video soon.